Hello, in this presentation, we will record the purchase of furniture into QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course, which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Here we are on the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If you've been continuing with us, that's great. If not, that's okay. We're going to be entering the purchase of furniture. As is typically the case with QuickBooks, there's a couple different ways that we can do that. We're going to do this by entering this into the register. Now, in this case, we're going to be purchasing this furniture simply for cash, and therefore we can enter the transaction directly into the register, or we could issue a check for it. However, if we were to do some other format of financing the furniture, as we'll do later on, we'll have to do some other format. So we'll see that later on. For now, we're going to be purchasing furniture just for cash. And we're going to be practicing using the register in order to record this. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the accounting down here, left-hand side, accounting. This will give us our chart of accounts. And we'll see that we have a register for every account. Now, if cash is affected, the easiest register to use is cash. If we wanted to enter this information into some other register, we could go to furniture and fixture and enter it into that register. But uh, it's usually typically easier to think about what's happening to cash and just get, do the other side of the account to whatever other account is being affected. So we're going to select view register for the checking account. And here's the information we have. We scroll over to the right just a bit. There's our running balances on the right. Scroll into the left, here is the transactions that we have so far. Within our check register, we have a few different options. If we select the drop down over here, we've got the check, the deposit, the sales receipt, uh, the bills, uh, receive payment, uh, refund, expense, transfer. In our case, we could use the expense item here, but we're going to say it's, it has a check number. So we want to put the check number in it. So we're going to use the check item up here. So we're going to say the check. And here is our check, and we're going to say the date of the check is 010921. Remember that we will be working in the month of January 2021. That's where we're going to be starting. We have to enter the check number because this is the first time we've had a check number. We're going to start off with 1002. From this point somewhere forward, it should populate for us within the check number here. Now we're going to say that the payee is going to be Office Depot. And we have to add Office Depot. We don't have that yet. So it's going to say, if I select tab or click here, if I select tab, it's going to say, do you want to add Office Depot? And we're going to say yes. It's going to be a vendor. That's just going to be the default. So it kind of just uh, guesses. Typically, guess is right because we are here in the expense window. So QuickBooks is pretty good at that. If we choose the right category here, then, of course, it can say, well, if you're buying something, we're probably going to be dealing with a vendor as opposed to a customer or employee. Uh, memo, we could put uh, a memo here. I'm not going to put one, but we could put uh, purchase furniture or something at that uh, memo section. And then we're going to say that the payment amount is uh, 16000 for our furniture and fixture. Tab to the deposit, no deposit because this is a payment. And then we're going to tab over to the other account that will be affected and it's going to be if we select the drop down it'll typically find the expense account because usually we would be entering an expense account but we're really looking for an asset account so i'm going to scroll down we're looking for furniture and fixture here it is now if we knew the account name already then we would want to start typing it and it'll auto populate the accounts that would fit what we are typing and then we could select the account that we want so it's going to be furniture and fixture and we're saving that and the transaction has been saved. That is good. So if we take a look at all these transactions, then uh, scroll into the outside, we see uh, the amount here went from 140 down to 124. Now let's take a look at the reports and see what we have there. If we go to the reports on the left hand side, we look two of our main reports for the balance sheet and the profit and loss. We can go to the balance sheet and select the balance sheet i'm going to run this for the month of january of the year we're working on so 0101 so there we have that and we will run the report 
Here is our balance sheet. So cash was affected. So if we select the cash account, then we can see that we have this furniture and fixture and it's a check. There's the check number. There's the split, uh, meaning the other account that will be affected. And if we check, if we click on that item, then we will see what actually happened. So here is our check. Gives us not the register, but the actual check. So if we entered it as a check, this is what it would look like. We entered it into the register, basically creating a check as we did so. And so we're going to close this back out and scroll back up to the top and go back to the report summary. Back to the report summary. All right, so there's going to be that side. Then the other side of this thing is going to be the furniture and fixture. Here's the furniture and fixture, 16000 Once again, if we go back into that, we can see the check once again, same check. So every transaction is going to have those two amounts. If we go back and forth from the uh, financial statements, typically the balance sheet and the income statement uh, is what we, all we really need, then we can really get a good idea of what we're doing here in terms of even debits and credits or at least what accounts are going up and down. And that will give us a good idea of what QuickBooks is doing as we go. Going back to the report here, and that is the furniture and fixture purchase. Now we're going to do this one more time. So we're going to go back to the accounts down here. We're going to enter one more piece of furniture from Amazon this time. We're going to go to accounting and we're going to go back to the register. So we're going into the register. Click anywhere here or click on the register. Apparently click on the register <laughs> and then we're going to add once again a check. So we want to add a check. We are going to have a check number. So if we put the check in there, it should populate for us at this time. Now we're going to put the check as of 01. 1121 and the check is going to be 1003. Note that because of the settings, it's defaulting to the current date before I put the, the date I'm working uh, in the future in this problem. So just be aware of that. Uh, it's, it's, that's typically good that it'll default to the current date. Uh, but when you're working on a practice problem, you're going to have to make sure that your dates are correct or else you're going to have date problems. <laughs> so we're going to say Amazon. And that's going to be our payee tab. It's going to say, we don't recognize Amazon. You want to include? We're going to say, yes, it's going to be a vendor selecting the drop down. That's the correct vendor. So that is good. And we'll tab through that memo and we'll tab through that. And the payment amount will be 7,000 tab, tab, tab. And the amount, then the other account then will be furniture and fixture. Again, if we select the drop down, it's going to go to the expense accounts. And if we scroll down through them, we will then find under the expense account, the account we want, asset account, furniture and fixture. Selecting furniture and fixture. We want to make sure once we've got everything in there that we say save. If we don't say save, then it doesn't save it. So say save and then we'll have it. So say save and we'll have it. And then we're going to go back to reports. Let's check this one more time. Go back to the balance sheets, all we really need. No income statement account affected. Note that when we purchase furniture and fixture, not an expense, even though we're paying cash in this case, not decreasing net income. Uh, so we're going to go, it will when we depreciate it, by the way. <laughs> so then we're going to go to the balance sheet, balance sheet. We'll select the balance sheet and check the dates one more time. So it's going to be as of 0101. 21 to 01 31 to 1 and we're going to go ahead and run that report so there we have it if we go into the checking account so we'll select the checking account and here is our items here so we've got the 16 there and the other happened on the 11th so there's our two amounts there we'll go back up to uh, back to the report summary and then scroll down and we'll see furniture and fixtures, same items. We'll check that at the 23,000. And we should see our two items there, the 16 and the 7. If we select the 7, then we will see the amount we put in there. And that's going to be uh, this amount here. It's going to be a check that we have written.